Hello biology students, today we're going to be talking about the animal kingdom, specifically the invertebrates, those without backbones. So as we talk about this, there's going to be a lot of terms that are more like IB level terms, but what I want you to pick up on is the big idea of evolutionary change, some of the similarities across some of these critters, some of the differences across them, and especially at how the different types of body systems like digestive system, circulatory and nervous system, how those things change and get more complex over time. Those are the types of things I want you to pick up on. All right, let's get started. So you really do need to know the basics about the animal kingdom, that all animals are eukaryotes and they have a nucleus, that they're multicellular, that we're heterotrophs, we're consumers, and that animals evolved from animal-like protists that were also heterotrophs and that we're going to be looking at lots of different types of animals and when we talk about them we're going to be comparing their types of symmetry when we talk about radial symmetry we're going to be thinking about it as the circular symmetry where we could take a mirror from any direction going downwards and there would be mirror images this compares to bilateral symmetry which is how humans are compared to this um this jellyfish type structure here um, we have two-sided symmetry that's what the prefix by means two-sided symmetry and we have two halves that are pretty identical um, so what you want to see is what the different organisms and within this kingdom how they compare with their symmetry how they compare with their different types of systems and so when we're thinking about digging deeply into the animal kingdom, we then need to think about the even more specific categories or taxa, which is a phylum. So we're going to be comparing the different phylums amongst the animal kingdom, specifically the ones with no backbones today. So we're going to start with the phylum periphera. You do not need to know the exact phylum names because we're not yet in IB biology, but if you want to start practicing, that's a good idea. Sponges is fine for now. So these are really, really simple critters, okay? And no, they do not look like SpongeBob, but they do have pores, and they're not really symmetrical in any way because they're so simple and funky. Um, they don't move, and they don't really have many digestive systems, uh, systems at all. The really system they have is their feeding system. They are heterotrophs. They do eat other things. And they only have one opening, a mouth, right? Um, and then they just catch plankton through that, all right? And plankton are photosynthesizers, so they get their energy that way. So very, 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 very simple, Okay. Um, the other system they do have is for gas exchange because they are going to be doing cellular respiration and that's just through diffusion of the in the water they're just going to um, get oxygen dissolved out of the water and they're going to release their co2 very simple very very simple no lungs or anything like that okay now we're getting to the next thing that's a little bit more complex we call it cnidaria you don't need to know how to say that it's just stinging animals these are our aquatic things that are like jellyfish corals etc i usually picture jellyfish when i picture this thing because they all have stinging tentacles they all are going to have radial symmetry so this is our first thing with symmetry and remember radial we could take a mirror and kind of put it in any orientation here and this guy would be symmetrical in all different ways same thing with this kind of weird looking guy over here all right again um there's a digestive system but it only has one opening imagine having your um mouth and your anus be the same opening mm, yum. right that's because it's so simple it doesn't have the complexity we have in the animal kingdom where we are standing and the phylum we'll talk about in another set of notes gas exchange is also really simple still we're just diffusing through the skin getting oxygen in co2 out all right, moving to a little bit more complex, we have the phylum platyhelminthes, and you don't need to know how to say that or write it. We call these the flatworms and the tapeworms. They're parasites, mostly aquatic and terrestrial parasites, but they're really flat looking. They don't look like the worms we see in the ground, okay? Um, they have bilateral symmetry, meaning they have two sides to them. They um, are the first thing to have a simple head or simple nervous system, meaning they have some sense organs or sense nerves and one end that can sense things like light. All right, they have a simple digestive system still, only mouth and anus kind of together. 
um, and gas diffusion is still through diffusion. So not a lot of improvement in the um, digestive system or gas exchange systems. Now we're at the nematodes, um, and those are more worms, <laughs> still very simple. Um, more parasitic worms that you do not want. Um, things like heartworm and hookworm, no, we do not want. Um, they are bilaterally sym symmetrical. And uh, they have simple digestive systems, but for the first time we have a separate mouth and anus. So I've bolded that because it's a pretty big deal. These are the first guys that have two separate things, making it one long tube that is a much better digestive-wise, but it's still kind of simple. Um, and they also do gas exchange through diffusion. Okay, now we're at regular worms that are segmented worms. We know that if we pulled a worm out of the ground, it has these different ring-like segments to it. Um, other things that are in this category are leeches, bait, we use for fishing. They all have bodies that are divided. That's pretty much more complicated for our skin and muscular systems. Um, they have bilateral symmetry. Their digestive system is, again, a little bit more complex. Now we have that mouth and anus, just like the last phylum, much better system. They have a uh, gas exchange system. And what's really cool and new here is we have a primitive heart, which is really exciting, and the blood has hemoglobin to move oxygen more effectively. Now moving on to mollusks. Mollusks are things like snails, slugs, mussels, clams, scallops, octopus, and squid. Whoa. And many of them have these cool new organs, like a hard shell for protection. We didn't see any cool organs like that in the other stuff. We have the muscular system improving, creating a specialized structure called a foot, which helps and aids for movement. So these guys can move around, especially terrestrially, a lot better. Um, even more complex digestive system, the mouth and the anus are getting even more specialized. They have an even more specialized nervous system. And now we're getting really specialized for gas exchange with different organs. We're getting basic lungs, basic gills, depending on if we're on water or on land. So we're starting to get a lot more complex, and a lot more specialized. Now we have uh, arthropods, which are jointed legged animals. Um, this is a giant phylum. Um, insects, crustaceans are in this category. So all insects, which is a giant thing. Crustaceans are things like shrimp. Um, so shrimp all the way to beetles, right? Um, and so they do have bilateral symmetry. I can kind of see two halves to these guys. Um, they have body parts, so their bodies are getting more complex. And they go through cool developmental stages called metamorphosis. Um, we're also getting cool skeletal structures, but it's only on the outside, exoskeletons only, um, and they shed uh, to grow. Uh, we know that's called molting. Um, the digestive system is getting even cooler and more complex. The mouth is getting really neat parts to it to help with digestion already in the mouth versus later on. Um, and again, gas exchange is pretty cool with some really nice basic organisms. We're getting some tubes in there. We're getting some gills, depending on if we're on land or on water. So again, um, later phylum are a lot more complex, right? And then here's our last one for this set of notes. We have the ec echinoderms, all right? And that is referring to mostly the sea stars, is what I usually think of, or sand dollars or um, starfish, okay? They have radial symmetry, back to radial, which kind of seems like we're going backwards a little bit. Um, but that's okay. Um, they don't have a head. They do have an exoskeleton, sometimes even spiny ones. Ouch, I don't want to step on the sea urchin. And they don't really have a lot of gas exchange, right? So again, um, it feels like we're kind of going backwards. But if we look at the cladogram, um, we can kind of see where we just went, right? From sponges to the um the stinging things to more crazy worms to our mollusks like our snails to our annelids like our our normal worms and then we got our insects that's where we just went through all of these and notice that we are ourselves our chordates which with backbones were pretty closely related to these guys in IB biology you'll talk about why and some of that is related to really complex developmental biology that you'll learn more about when you get to IB. So really great job. Next we'll talk about things with backbones like us.